number one is all about plotting numbers on a number line. So in this type of a question, the way that we've got to do it, first of all, we're going to be given a number line. So this will have a whole bunch of numbers on there. Let's just write some more. So the numbers that we've got to pretty much got to go up to, what's the biggest number here? Biggest number is a square root of 50. No, it's not, it's three cubed. So the first thing that I would do is I would put zero in the middle. The first number we've got to plot is the square root of 50. Okay, when we are asked to figure out the square root of 50, we need to look for the closest perfect squares. So the closest perfect square above 50 would be 8 times 8, which would be 64. So we put 64 over here. The closest perfect, uh, perfect square below 50 would be 49. So this is what we're doing to estimate the square root of 50. So if we take the square root of 49, that would give us 7. And if we take the square root of 64, that would give us 8. So we know that the number, square root of 50, is between 7 and 8. And because 50 is closer to 49, that's only one hop away. 50 to 64 is 14 hops, so we know it's very close to 49. So I would actually estimate the square root of 50 to be around 7.1-ish. So we need to find wherever 7.1 is, and on the test we would be given a scale, we'd know where 7 is, and we'd know where 8 is, and we would plot this closer to the 7 really. So we would label it with a dot and the square root of 50. So that's the first number we were asked to plot. The second one is a little easier, it's the square root of 9. So square root of 9 is 3, so wherever 3 happened to be, you would again put a dot and put label the square root of 9. And you could, over here, you could show your work and put 3. All right, the next one is negative 4, so we would have to plot negative 4 on there. So again, these numbers would be showing, wherever negative 4 appears, put a dot and you could label it negative 4. The next one looks a little funny on the page, but it is the pi sign. And so pi is approximately 3.14, so you would find wherever that is between 3 and 4, and you would label pi. The next one is 3 to the third power. And so we must remember that this isn't 9. We're not multiplying these two numbers. We're doing 3 times 3 times and so that would give us 27. So 27 is going to be all the way this line on the test paper. It's going to be a little more clear, but wherever 27 is, you would label that point as 3 to the third power. Okay, we're almost there. Two more. The next one that we've got to plot is negative 0 0.5. So again, we look for 0. We go to the left. Now, 1 might be labeled but, n sorry, negative 1 might be labeled, but we've got to label negative 0 0.5 between the negative 1 and the 0. Okay, and then finally, the next one, the very last one for question 1, is 10 to the 0 power. Now, this looks like a degree sign, but it's really not. It's 10 to the 0 power, and the key thing to remember here is that anything to the 0 power is 1. So even if it's a million to the zero power, answer is one. If it's a half to the zero power, answer is one. So you would find wherever one is, again, you would put a dot, hopefully you're gonna have more space than I've made myself, and you would label it as 10 to the zero power. Okay, that's a very messy question number one. Hope question number two. This is asking us to find the volume and surface area of a cube with a side of four inches. So with a cube, every single side has the same dimensions. And when we're dealing with volume and surface area, we know that we are dealing with 3D shapes. So we're told that it's a cube. We are also told that each side is four inches. So if we wanted to, we could try and sketch this thing out and we could show a picture of it if we are good at drawing or not. And we could label four inches 
four inches. So length is four, width is four, and the height is also four. So even if we can't remember the formula for a cube, we could still use rectangular prism formulas. So V equals LWH, that gives us our volume, and the surface area, these formulas are going to be shown, they are going to be shown in the uh, state test. The surface area of a rectangular prism is actually 2LW plus 2WH plus 2L. H. So this is all for a rectangular prism. For a cube, because L is the same as W, is the same as H, there's another way that we can write it for a cube. So let me change the color. This is kind of important if we can remember it. The formula for the volume of a cube is just side times side times side. So that is S cubed. The surface area formula for a cube is also kind of a little easier, I guess. If we imagine one of these sides, this side right here would be S times S, which is S squared. And because there are, there are six sides on a cube, we would deal with the formula 6S squared. And it's S squared because we're dealing with area. So we're dealing with the surface on and around the edge, around this. So let's just focus on this cube formula. If we're asked first for the volume of this, we would do V equals S cubed, which is really 4 cubed. And 4 cubed equals 4 times 4 times 4. So 4 times 4 gives us 16. And then we've got to remember to times this by 4. So, you know, if we wanted to, we could break this number up. We could do 4 times the 10 and then 4 times the 6. So that would equal 64. We can't forget units. We look back, we see the problem has inches in it, so we leave inches. And because this is volume, we must use cubed. So this would be my answer. 64 inches cubed. And we will do the surface area of the shape, which equals 6 s squared. And we would just substitute in our value for s, which is 4. And remember, we, we can't do the 6 times the 4 first. We must deal with these exponents first, the parentheses and exponents. So this is the same as 6 times 16. So again, we could do 6 times 10 and then 6 times 6. 6 tens are 60, and then we've got to add 6 times 6. That gives us 96 inches squared. And it's squared because we are dealing with area. So that's how we answer number two. Number three. Okay, number three is asking for arc length and sector area. This is a question they really do like to show, so we've got to be very careful. We are told that this sector area has two things. It has a radius of eight centimeters. So this is what a sector looks like. Be careful, it's not a triangle. There are three sides, but the external side here is like an arc. So the things that we are told are, number one, we are told that the angle is 50 degrees. We are also told that the radius is 8 inches. So we're told these couple of things. From this, the question asks us to find the arc length. Okay, the arc length is from this point right here all the way around the outside until this point here. So it's almost like the circumference. If this circle was to continue, it would go all the way around. Okay, so try and imagine that. So we're dealing with almost a fraction, a little portion of this circumference. So first of all, we know that the circumference of the entire circle is... 2 pi r. That's if we were dealing with everything. If we were just dealing with this little piece of this circle, we need to multiply this by a fraction. And so we know that this entire circle would have 360 degrees. But we're only after this little piece. So we're after 50 degrees worth. Almost 50 degrees worth, well exactly 50 degrees worth of the entire circle. So we would turn this into a fraction. 50 
over 360 times by 2 pi r. So remember again, this is arc length. Okay, so to handle this, we could simplify this fraction. They both have a factor of 10, so we could cancel out those zeros. So we still have 5 over 36 times by 2 times by pi, and we need to use the pi button on our calculator, times by 8. And this 8 isn't all that obvious, but really this 8 is the radius. We were told this in the question. So this 8 is from here, the cent which should be the center of the circle, to the outside. Okay, so as we do this work, we could handle the numerator first, so 5 times 2 is 10, times 8 is 80. So this is the same as 80 all over 36 pi. And I got the 80 by doing the 5 times the 2, which is 10, times the 8, which is 80. And I still have this fraction, 80 over 3, 36 times by the pi. And so using the pi button on the calculator, okay, using the pi button on the calculator, I'm going to do 80 divided by 36. That gives me 2.2 .2 recurring. And I'm going to times that by, and then I've got to find the pi button and press equals. So this actually gives me an answer of 5 point, sorry, excuse me, so actually gives me an answer of 6.98 inches. And this is just inches, not inches squared, because it's the distance around the outside. This could be measured by a piece of string and a ruler. This is the arc length answer. Okay, so when dealing with the sector area, When dealing with the sector area, we need again to use the area formula, pi r squared, whereas before it, with the arc length we were dealing with 2 pi r, and we need to multiply this by again the angle fraction, which is 50 all over 360. The zeros cancel to give us 5 over 36. We still have to times by pi, times by r squared, which is 8 squared. So therefore, this is the same as 64 times 5. So 60 times 5 is 300. The 4 times 5 is 20. So it would be 320 all over 360 pi. The zeros cancel. And the 32 all over 36 pi could actually simplify. Um, 4 goes into each of these. 4 goes into that 5, 6, 7, 8 times. And 4 goes into this 9 times pi. So that's 8 over 9 times by pi. If I use, go back to the calculator, 8 divided by 9 equals times by pi button equals. This gives me an answer of 2.79. Now my units are inches squared because we're dealing with area this time.